All right, guys, one of the most common questions I get asked as a lineman is what do you guys do when there's no power outages? Today, what we're gonna be doing by popular request is showing you a typical day as a lineman. I just got my computer booted up. It's not unusual for me to have 30 to 40 work orders in queue. Appointments, I get a window that pops up right over top of all my work orders to make sure I don't miss it. Now this morning it says disconnect reconnect service at gives the address for electrician along with his name and information. Looks like the customer is changing from fuses to breakers. So in order to do this work, the electrician requires a permit through our province and in order to change their main breaker, which is directly connected to our metering. I have to disconnect the power to that house so the electrician can work safely. So we're going to head over there first, maybe grab a coffee on the way, we'll see what's up. Alright, so we're here at our first job site. The electrician's going to be converting a fuse panel to a breaker panel. Now it's already rated for 200 amps, so what I'm hoping for is that the leads coming out of the meter are long enough to reach the new breaker panel inside. If that's the case, all I'm going to have to do is remove the meter put a secure cover over top so that nobody can get their hands into the live stuff in there. Seal that, they'll give me a shout when they're done at the end of the day. All right, so the electrician has indicated that they're gonna to need to replace the wires going into the house through the LB from the meter. So in order to work inside here, we're gonna to have to de-energize this entire unit. So we get our ladder out, we're gonna go up there, we're gonna cut the house clear. I will be able to leave the wires attached to the house, so that makes things a little bit easier get this done and we'll show, show you what it looks like. All right, we now have the house cut clear. Let's hit the right, road. So I'm just gonna sit this work order in queue because I'm gonna have to come back and I'll fill out some information later on as to uh, how we made out this call. I think what we'll do next, I see there's a call here over at a small shopping mall reporting that there's a blank meter screen most likely reported by one of our meter readers when they attempted to read the screen. It's obviously a digital meter and the screen is blank. So let's go investigate. Right now we're inside one of the metering rooms in this shopping mall. There's multiple meters behind me and the particular one in question, the breaker is in the off position, feeding that meter, giving us a blank screen. One thing I will never do is flick a breaker on without knowing exactly why it's off. So I'm going to fill out a report indicating that the breaker is off and I'll have our office contact the customer and we'll find out what's going on. Alright, let's head down to one of our substations. First thing we do when we arrive at a substation is we let our dispatchers know that we are here and going to be doing work inside. A lot of these switches can be remotely operated by our dispatchers. Last thing we want is for them to start operating a switch if we're in the vicinity in case something goes wrong. Now it's actually working out pretty good today. I have a work order for a substation inspection. I also have a work order to do some locates here. Now if you've seen some of my previous videos I mentioned about call before you dig. There's power lines buried in the ground everywhere. This particular substation has a ton of buried power lines. Now there's gonna be some work in the near future being done in the vicinity. So what I'm gonna to have to do, I'm gonna to have to clamp on to those wires, use a special machine we got to try and locate them. I'll show you how that works in a moment. Before I get to that, let's get hold of our dispatcher right now. We'll let them know what we are up to. Bet I got some underground locates to do here on the feeder cables. So first thing we do before going into one of our substations, this applies universally all around the world. You check your substation area for any uh, vandalism or break-ins. It could compromise bonding and grounding of the site. So if you touch anything, you could get an electrical shock. Our entire site is bonded together. Everything on site is bonded. Every piece of wire, every piece of fence,
All right, so we didn't find any holes in the fence, no cut locks. We're gonna start taking a walk around through our equipment now. So we're just checking out the overall condition of all the equipment in the substation. Our insulators up top on our 138 bus work up there. This is our circuit breaker right here. Now it's minus 12 outside right now. I don't think our fans are gonna be coming on, but uh, those are to help cool the transformer on warm summer days when there's a lot of load on it. You check the condition of our silica gel. That's actually helped suck the, uh, that actually helps suck the moisture out of the power transform unit that can contaminate the oil. Another very important check is to make sure there's no oil leaking from any of the units. So what you're looking at behind me right now is actually one of the exit cables. So you can see here a vacuum recloser. So similar to an oil recloser, if there's a fault in the line, that I'll actually open the line for a very brief period, closing it back in, hopefully allowing the fault to clear. So that goes into our three phase cables right to underground. So there's several feeder cables in the substation. Traveling underground to who knows where. So we're going to be clamping onto those feeder cables and locating them to see where it's safe and where it's not safe to dig in the area. It's going to be hard to figure out exactly which one's which. So as I induce a foreign frequency onto those cables, you should be able to figure out where exactly they're going. Founder, you should be able to follow this cable now all the way out to the riser pole. All right, so we're done locating all of our cables. I'm going to do up some drawings and fire that off to the engineers. Now, should the city decide they are gonna be doing some digging near any of these energized cables, there may be some switching involved in which we have to de-energize the cables in order for them to be able to work safely. Also, uh, even if the cables are de-energized, we'll have to have one of our company representatives on site to ensure that uh, proper code is followed if those cable ducts are exposed and that nothing gets nicked or damaged. It can become quite a complicated procedure at times. Let's get back in the warm truck and see where we're off to next. Whew, that chewed up a good part of the morning. All right, let's see what we got next here. I think we're gonna go get a couple of these street lights up and running. I don't get nearly as many work orders now as I used to when we had the old high pressure sodium lights. The LED ones are pretty good. Lucky for us, this one here, it's the photo control that went bad. This is the part that actually allows the light to turn on automatically as soon as the sun goes down. There we go, we've installed our new photo control. Shot that one up pretty quick. All right, so that one was a super quick fix, which is awesome, because sometimes troubleshooting streetlights can be a real pain in the butt, especially if they're fed from underground. So this is the old photo control that I actually removed from the light. So we got some moisture inside it, hits the cold air, turns to water, and that fries the circuit board inside that photo control. So this one here is garbage, new one's installed, and we are on to the next one. All right, so change of plans here, guys. That's a trouble call that came in. No power, 32 customers. Now the first thing I'll check for this particular call is that the cutouts are all closed in for the feed. You can see here it's three phase. There's a pad mount transformer down over that embankment there. But all three fuses are still closed. 
I can't see the line being out further further down as if it was there would be a fairly large outage in the area I definitely would have received some more phone calls by now so what we'll do we'll head inside we'll take a look in the meter room I'll uh, there was only as far as I understand one woman that called so it's probably just her breaker I think we're gonna end up chalking this one up as a dud all right guys so as I suspected I spoke with the customer I instructed her on how to actually reset her breaker which you have to operate it fully in the down then back in the on position. So we're gonna sign this one off as a customer own problem call. I'll notify dispatch that all customers in the area do have power. My alarm is going off on my computer again. So I gotta pull over and check out the details in this call. As with power lines, of course, there's oftentimes emergencies that involve arcing equipment, or roads blocked off, wires down, stuff like that. Generally speaking, if it's a real emergency, the dispatcher will call me direct to make sure I don't miss it in case I'm out of the truck and don't hear the alarm going off. So we're gonna take a look here. There's no outages on this one. There's something about a guy wires broken. Customer notice in their yard. So the guy wires are pretty slack there. Might be causing a little bit of tension on the house. Alright, so nobody's home here. We got this guy wire up getting tight. This one here is rotted off in the anchor on the ground. So, customer's gone home. I've got a door hanger filled out just to let them know that uh, we'll be returning to set a new anchor for them another time. So I'm on my way back to reconnect that house that we disconnected this morning. We're back at that house. We got everything hooked back up upstairs. He said he's good to go. Let's plug her in. All right guys, so right now we're actually inside the control room for the terminal. Now, if you're wondering what a terminal is, it's basically a really big substation. But the difference is a substation has transmission lines coming in and transformed to a lower voltage to be redistributed into the town or the city. Now, a terminal actually has all the transmission lines come together into a grid, at which point they can be switched. We can change feeds around. Sometimes they'll have an entire high line go down. Now, a high line or transmission line is what you see on those big towers out there. They're typically over 100,000 volts. If one of those lines goes down, you can quickly lose 20, 30, 50,000 customers. So we come to these terminals and we're able to switch these lines around. Now, every single piece of equipment at terminal is alarmed and monitored and relayed for things like low oil, temperatures, any sort of malfunctions. So part of my duties as a serviceman is actually to regularly come by, check things out. We look for alarms, any problems in the control room. Typically, if there is a major issue, the alarm will notify our dispatcher right away. Sometimes I get calls at two, three o'clock in the morning, I get to run out here. Click a few buttons, maybe get some uh, technicians out here to take a look at things. Couple of wires in here. Oh yeah, I'm also updating my computer while I'm here. Come on, come on. Almost there. 